and welcome to Marketing Monday Super Bowl Ads Edition. The one day of the year when people actually care about watching advertisements. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing all of the ads from Super Bowl 58 and seeing if any of them were worth a damn. Specifically worth $7 million. And therefore, if you're gonna spend this much, ideally, your ad is good. <laughs> ideally, people will like it or it improves the relevancy or brand positivity of your brand. Couple things I want you to know before we jump into reviewing the ads themselves and giving them all a rating. Number one, it's the most play it safe year almost ever. And that's largely because of social media backlash. We all remember the Bud Light uh, controversy, but that has scared the piss <laughs> out of big marketers. They don't want to offend anyone. As everyone knows from creative endeavors, the way to be really memorable is to be as bland <laughs> and unoffensive as possible. The second thing is celebrities. A big theme going into this year's Super Bowl is the fact that it is overwhelmingly stuffed to the gills with celebrities. They can throw celebrities in there to increase the likelihood that it gets shares, which prevents the person that did it from getting fired, and to increase the likability. And this year they went off the rails with it. So again, this has been trending up over time. The number of ads with celebritism has gone up. The third and maybe most important thing about this year's Super Bowl that you should know is that it's the first year where the average age of the viewer is 43. That is the single either oldest millennial or youngest Gen X, which means this is the first official Millennial Super Bowl. <laughs> For the next 10 to 15 years, every Super Bowl is going to get more millennial. This was the first one, and you could just tell from the early 2000s theme of all of the stuff that came out. Uh, the, the, the final thing you wanna mention is that AI. AI, I thought would be a bigger theme going into the Super Bowl because AI has dominated the stock market. However, this graph shows most Americans are getting more and more scared and concerned about AI. So you're actually gonna see less of it in the commercials than I thought originally. For example, you might see a Jesus ad with six-toed feet. They don't mention the AI, but <laughs> this doesn't look very normal to me. To rank the ads, I created a proprietary tier list. Now I think, you know, if, if you know me, I have a pretty simple system for deciding if an ad is good. If it's somewhat clever and has some sort of message <laughs> that, that, that can impart upon the viewer about their product or brand, then you've done a decent job. A lot of people see this, it's not that hard, you'd think. <laughs> We navigated a turbulent housing market by buying a boater home. We file taxes for millions of new homeowners and guarantee 100% accuracy. Was that a shark? Yes. Make your moves count. Intuit TurboTax, 100% accuracy guaranteed. Incredibly boring. <laughs> TurboTax, by the way, is a horrendous company. However, I'm not gonna judge ads based on that. I just think this is a pretty, pretty forgettable bad ad. Maybe it's forget. Actually, I'll put it easy to forget. It really is. It's just easy to forget. Now we got Deadpool. This was probably, I think, the most viewed Super Bowl ad on YouTube of all. And for obvious reasons, people actually like this brand. <laughs> Wade Wilson? Who's asking? Whoa, 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 whoa. Pegging isn't new for me, friendo, but it is for Disney. Your little cinematic universe <laughs> is about to change forever. I am. Oh, no, just stand there, you ape. Give me a hand up. <laughs> nope, I'm actually okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, pretty positively reviewed. One of the last, you know, Marvel adjacent brands that still has positive fan momentum. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Basically, uh, Disney is now fucking worried that all of the millions of uh, Marvel things they've pushed out have now ruined uh, fan excitement. And so Deadpool is the last thing they got people still like, and they're gonna go all in, <laughs> which I'm sure will work. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Deadpool and actually great. Dove ad. The problem with that ad, only in my mind, was this. This ad had a good chance of going viral. If they had just kept it at this, this would have been fine. But then they threw in 14 fucking hashtags and completely tanked their ability to get any shares. You spent 7 million plus on this ad and you don't know that this is fucking trash? We'll put that ad in A. But our next one is one of the most talked about ads of the Super Bowl. Foot Fetish Jesus. Again, notice the six toes. <laughs> this is an AI generated ad that is not disclosed. Don't ask me what you know is true. <laughs> We can live 
What a weird fucking ad. This is what the WTF category was created for. One of the weirdest of all time. Again, I'm not a big believer in the any publicity is good publicity, but I'm also a believer that like, it's better to be talked about than boring for something like this. That being said, as an ad, the, the concept is trash, dude. It's a PowerPoint of AI feet images. <laughs> This next one, I'm a sucker for a good concept. Let's give the next one up for Kawasaki's mullet ad. Business in the front, party in the back. The all new Kawasaki Ridge. Is that so hard? They had a clever tagline. They tied it through in the ad. There used to be a time you'd think every ad in the Super Bowl would be like that. That would be the baseline. But I feel like the quality is deteriorated so much that stood out to me really hard. Actually, I think I'll put, I think I'll put an S here, to be honest. Let's get to the, the real story of the day. Timu. Timu ran six different big game ads. the Tamu app and shop like a billionaire. So you might notice this ad looks and feels like a mobile game ad. And that's not a coincidence. Cause if you've used Temu, it plays like a mobile game. <laughs> They've used mobile game tricks, gamification tricks to try and get you to buy more products on, the, on, their, on their app. And the reason they are spending so damn much is it worked. So last year at the 2023 Super Bowl, they had a huge Super Bowl ad blitz followed by spending $1.3 billion on advertising in a single year. Temu was one of the largest advertisers in a year ever in the history of any company. <laughs> but then since April of last year, they have seen a bit of a regression. Every other retailer on platforms like Facebook, Google, you know, Instagram have talked about how it's much more difficult to buy ad slots because Temu has bid up the price on almost every ad slot. That being said, they can't do it for this much longer because right now, because of marketing spend, they lose $7 per order on average. <laughs> it's very razor thin margins and they spend it all on marketing. So we'll see if they can do it in the long term. And I'll be honest with you, the ad's trash, but this is more effective than almost every other ad we're gonna watch today. <laughs> For in terms of effectiveness, a top A tier ad. The most important ad of all. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an ad for today's sponsor of a Marketing Monday, Rocket Money. Thank you so much to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's Super Bowl ad review. If you wanna support Marketing Monday, check out rocketmoney.com slash atrioc. Rocket Money is a place where you can see all of your current active subscriptions and easily cancel them. You can also track your spending and easily plan and save for the future. Rocket Money has been a longtime supporter of this content. I really appreciate them. Rocketmoney.com slash atrioc. If you wanna support this content, just go check them out. It's free and you can see everything you subscribe to. And again, if you wanna upgrade, they have a paid service where they will negotiate down your prices. So for example, if you have a cable bill that's high or it keeps getting raised, they will negotiate it down and only charge you based on what they save you. And if you like this content, it means a lot to me if you wanna check them out. So thanks for Rocket Money. That costs Rocket Money $7 million, by the way. <laughs> Here's an interesting one. I wanna talk about the next one. I'm this Michael is Sarah. Michael Saravi. <laughs> I'm Michael Sarah, and human skin is my passion, which is why I developed this. Saravi. Let my cream hydrate you. Saravi. Developed with Michael Sarah. V. We like? <laughs> so my name is Sarah. <laughs> And so there's it's perfect crossover opportunity. <laughs> Funny, self-aware, made for the internet age. You literally remember the product because they forced it into the joke. That's a good ad. The only thing I didn't like about this ad, prior to the Super Bowl, they ran a bunch of really cringy social media viral stunts. Like Michael Sarah was going around to different CVSs and touching all the CeraVe. And then they were like pretending to catch him in the act. That was really lame. <laughs> But if this was just this ad, it was good. The ad was clever. And we're only judging ads today, so I'm gonna put this in, uh, I think I'm gonna put this in S. Uh, we are on Chris Walken and BMW. Nice ride. It's the real deal, 100%. Electric. It's the real deal. Yeah. Thank you. Of course, enjoy your coffee. Careful, it's hot. Okay, thanks. Your dog's so cute. Hello, Mr. Walken. Does this table work for you? Yeah. Yeah. Did someone say yeah? Don't you got somewhere to be? Yeah. 
Oh. There's only one Christopher Walken and only one ultimate driving machine. The rest are just imitations. <laughs> Fine skit, like if it was SNL with Chris Walken, bad ad for BMW, which is again, is just shoehorned at the end. It's a celebrity soup into brand at the end. Mid, forgettable. Not gonna lie, I thought it was Mercedes. <laughs> You know, what's funny is that happens a lot. If people see an ad they like and you ask them about it later, they often fill in the brand with a brand they like. So you really have to, like, even if it seems a little crass, you have to put your brand forward or you're just wasting money. People are, already have bad memories. Let's go next, though. How about the Nerds Big Game commercial featuring Addison Ray? The union of fruity sweet gummy and tangy crunchy nerds. Nerds gummy clusters. Unleash your senses. <laughs> what did they pay her for that? That's so funny. Why would she even include it? Let's see what the comments say. This is my favorite commercial by far this year. What a feeling. Poppable goodness. Are these bot comments? <laughs> I already love nerds gummy clusters, but seeing one as a cute giant gummy creature pouring nerds on himself like out of flash dance is just too good. <laughs> the YouTube comments love it, bro. Easy to forget. Move on. Coors Light Chill Train. He's here. Anyone want a Coors Light? Light? <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I think it's so fucking audacious that Coors Light has made it their fucking mission to brand their drink as colder. <laughs> There's no way you can make a drink colder, but they have really tried and I, I respect it, dude. I All right, I liked it, but the real contest is between Coors Light and Bud Light. Bud Light had a pretty negative year. Coors Light eager to gain that ground. Let's compare, let's jump ahead and let's watch the Bud Light ad and see which of the two is superior. Are you? The Bud Light genie? Yeah. 80s metal hair. Yes. Filthy Ray. So filthy. Oh, let's rock. I wish Peyton Manning was my best friend. Uh -huh. Oh, hey. oh, Post Malone. Hey. Oh, Gosh, just Reese. But we're Post Malone. You're toast. Woo! Yeah! Uh, Let's go to Super Bowl 58. Now we're talking. That might be one of the most trying too hard designed by committee ads I've ever seen. Uh, I think this ad is worse than the Coors one, but again, fine. The next one was an interesting case where the marketers had to adapt on the fly. This is FanDuel Rob Gronkowski super kick where you could bet on him kicking a field goal and they had Carl Weathers train him for the ad, but then Carl Weathers recently died after they filmed the ad. So they had to change it last minute to include a second part where they like did a memorial on his life because they didn't want to see, be seen as disrespectful. Sure all, Brock. That's what they did. So they cut out the training part and they added a three second thing at the end where it said, thank you, Carl. This ad right here is terrible. It's just a jumbled mess. But the concept of creating an event that you made up called the Kick of Destiny and hyping it up and making a story about it every year and you can only bet on it through their app is at least smart. Now, that being said, I think a lot of people were angry this year because he's missed it again after all the practice. And it's like, I mean, Ninja tells me it's easy. People are mad that it's like staged. I don't have no idea if it's staged or not, but it is crazy that he's missing it from that close after a year of supposed practice. Ads forgettable. The concept was pretty smart. Definitely a way to steal some people over from DraftKings, which is the market leader. Hello down there, directed by Martin Scorsese. This is the Scorsese one. I, I do recall this one. <laughs> I told you to take Broadway. This always happens. <laughs> Someone in chat said, stick to movies, little bro. <laughs>
This doesn't even look like a fucking website. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At the very least, you want it to look like a Squarespace website. This is a pretty bad ad. I think <laughs> I'm kind of shocked. Is there a longer version that like maybe is better? I'm, I'm shocked to do this, but in my mind, that is an actively bad ad. Uh, anyway, next ad, this is one of the bigger budget ads of the whole event. Let's see, Duncan the Dung Kings. I don't think you should do this. Last year she came to my work. Now I gotta show her what I can do. Ah, flat on the track. What up, Bronx? For your consideration, the Dung Kings! Dung Kings! Don't, don't go away at my heart. Why you dunking me, girl? Why you dunking me? Dung Kings! How do you like them donuts? I'm so sorry. You had to see it, but I forgive you. You remember when I told you I'd do anything for you? This is anything. Chill. They're naming a drink after us. I think it's very on brand for Duncan. Duncan is slop, and they wanted it to be slop. I'm, I'm putting it, I think it's pretty solid. Okay, Google. Google had an ad this year. Again, I've been pretty complimentary of Google's ads in the past because they were like the pioneer of making their product the whole story of the ad. The customer's the hero, they use the product, and then things go great. For many people with blindness or low vision, there hasn't always been an easy way to capture daily life. One face cropped. Move your phone down. One face in frame. Hold for photo. Hello. One face and one head in frame. Three faces in frame. Hold for photo. <laughs> Capture life, no matter how you experience it. That's interesting. But I generally like Google Ads. I think that was the same thing. It just It's such a niche use case. That one, I'm, I, I don't have a great answer on. I'll be honest with you. It might be pretty good. Now, this one I fucking hate already. Their new tagline that Snapchat is doing, less social media, more Snapchat, is so taking the piss, dude. <laughs> it's like, fuck you. But I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna go with an open mind. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, the concept's not bad. It hit on actual things people hate about social media and have like grown disillusioned with. It's just, it pisses me off that it's Snapchat. <laughs> like, Snapchat has wanted to do everything Instagram and Facebook has done, but hasn't been able to. They're not, they have no moral high ground to stand on. They're just a little worse. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in actively bad, actually. I'm sorry, it just pisses me off. Let's see, oh, the next one, the only political ad. Want a man for president who's seasoned through and through. American Value 2024 is responsible for the content of this advertisement. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> the one thing we are hearing from everyone across the country, our candidates are too old. Here's an idea. I'm going to make my ad to show how independent I am by setting it in the fucking 60s. He said sorry for the ad on Twitter. Did he really? I'm so sorry if the Super Bowl ad was like cost me my family pain. The ad was created and aired by the American Value Super PAC without any involvement or approval from my campaign. It's literally your pinned tweet right now. <laughs> Next ad is, I think, the single most shared non-movie trailer ad of the whole Super Bowl. On Paramount Mountain, the stakes get higher. <sighs> I mean, I, I can't get that thing up there. What about a football-shaped head? We throw the child. I'm not gonna throw a kid. <laughs> not built for the moment, I see. Fine, <laughs> I'll throw him. <laughs> I just threw him higher. He just threw Now, if there were only someone made of pigskin. Bingo. Oh, dear. Millennials, get in! 
Uh, look, if you go by any metric, it was probably the best performing ad of the Super Bowl. I don't think it saves Paramount Plus. <laughs> I am going to put that in S tier. The Pfizer big game commercial. I got an idea for a Pfizer ad. Let me just pitch mine before they show me theirs. It's an unbroken shot, empty white room, Bill Gates in a chair, close zoom of his face. He's staring right at you, at America, at every single person. And he breaks out into a weird, wicked Joker grin. <laughs> I'm getting DMCA struck by Pfizer. I'm gonna cover it live. Don't stop. Me now, <laughs> burning through the sky. Yeah, 200 degrees is why they call me Mr. Felon. Hi. What's the theme? What's the theme? It's it's scientists, smart people work at Pfizer. Here's the science. <laughs> uh, oh, we're gonna beat cancer. I have no problem with beating cancer. I don't know that Pfizer is the one that's doing it, but I do know Pfizer's had a pretty bad year for their stock. So I assume they're trying to turn it around. Okay, this one is very interesting. The Volkswagen big game commercial, which coincidentally starts exactly in the year 1949. Interesting choice. Volkswagen was founded a little earlier than that. Did you ever read about a frog who dreamed of being a king? Oh, my cry. Yeah. Even say why. Punch buggy red. <laughs> uh, I mean, the ad itself is is uh, forgettable and fine, but the fact that it brings up their history when their history is the one thing you shouldn't want to look at is fucking funny. <laughs> I'm going to put it in actively bad because is that it reminds people that Volkswagen <laughs> had Nazi ties. Okay, actually, probably the only pro AI ad of the whole event, and that was Microsoft, which of course... Watch me. Just watch me now. I just, I just, I got some joy. I just watch me now. They say I'll never be a real artist. Watch me. Here's the worst fucking dragon you've ever seen. They say I'll never generate 20 images of feet washing. <laughs> the top comment, they said I couldn't do this. I said, you're right. I'll let AI do it for me. <laughs> All right, Budweiser. Now this ad is a classic. Come on. The are currently closed. You've got to be kidding me. What do you want to do? Hey. Horse. All right. I'm interested. Let's do it the old school way. Tell me there's not dog. Look. <laughs> Horse dog beer! Truly a slop ad. <laughs> but it did lead to what I think is my favorite ad of the Super Bowl period, not an actual Super Bowl ad, from the boys. Freedom, football, family, horses, <laughs> and this great nation. Today, we salute the real heroes by cracking open an ice cold turbo <laughs> rush for the big game. Bro, it's even better because they had to make this ahead of time and they aired at the same time as the Bud commercial, which does these things unironically. And what's great is they didn't have to pay $7 million. <laughs> Look, there's a bunch of news articles about it and they just call it Super Bowl ad. They saved all the money and it's fucking hilarious, super viral, super shared. Yeah, bro, <laughs> this is a Super Bowl ad. This is actually the lowest. I'm sorry, I got that wrong earlier. This is has 33K views. <laughs> This ad is actual fucking trash, dude. Discover customer service. This is Maya. Oh, hi, Maya. You robots are sounding more human every day. Oh, I am <laughs> human. At Discover, everyone can talk to a human representative. All right, prove it. Wait, are you a robot? How would I prove that I'm not? I can't. I Man, I, I, I truly feel like you might get fired for that. <laughs> that was, that was bad. Uh, but it's actually bad is what it is. We could use Etsy's Why does everyone say Kanye? There's no Kanye ad in the Super Bowl. It only aired in two states. All right, well, fuck it. We'll watch it. Hey, y'all, this is Yay, and this is my commercial. And since we spent all the money on the commercial spot, we actually didn't spend any money on the actual commercial. I want you to go to Yeezy.com, and I got some shoes, and... Mm, 
That's it. It's actually not bad. Probably did really well because it's got people sharing and talking about it as a Super Bowl ad, even though we only bought it for two states. Some of the ad, ad slots of Super Bowl have to be local. And what was really funny was that uh, Canadians mock Super Bowl ads up north in contrast with the American version. They had to watch a fucking hour of Canada ads. They did not hold back from making it abundantly clear they'll do whatever it takes to be free from the agony of having to watch Canadian ads during the Super Bowl. <laughs> very very cool and thanks again for watching this first edition of the super bowl ad review on marketing monday thank you guys that was fun uh what was your favorite ad uh, let me know in the comments below check it, check it.